I'm Stella reporting from Voice K. Today we are at the Ontario Science Center with Daniel Fisher. Can I ask you some questions? Sure. So, what is your role in this exhibition? I was what's called the guest curator. That is, I was not an employee of the Field Museum who developed this, this exhibition, but I was the sort of outside expert that they, they called in to help in the process of organizing it. I do most of my research on mammoths and mastodons. I have for, for many years, and so I know the people who are doing the work, the museums that have the specimens, and so I knew where we could go to get a really good collection of specimens to tell the story of mammoths and mastodons. What are the differences and similarity between a mammoth and a mastodon? The differences in the DNA? Okay, so the, the mastodons and mammoths separated about 27 million years ago. So they're actually, even though they look very similar in terms of tusks and some of the structure, they're all related to elephants, but they're actually very, very different. Um, and certainly genetically, they're very, very different, right? So there's no way that they could mix or interbreed. They were clearly separate. But what's so interesting is the mastodons came over to North America about 24 million years ago and they stayed here over that entire time period. And then when the mammoths came into North America, the Colombian, the large Colombian over there in that room, came over about a million years ago, they, they saw each other, like, hey! And they lived together all the way up to when they went extinct about 11,000 years ago. So they interacted, they didn't live in the same biomes because the mastodons hang out more in the marsh, and the large Colombian were on the open sort of savanna grasslands, but they definitely probably saw each other. And then a little bit later came the woolly mammoth. And so now you have the woolly, the Colombian, and the mastodon all at the same time period in North America started hanging out with each other. That's very interesting. Yeah. So tell me about the relationship between the elephant and the mastodon and the mammoth. Okay, so the modern elephants um, the, the mammoths evolved from an ancestor that led obviously also to the elephants. So it turns out that we, the, the elephants, the earliest ancestor of elephants left Africa about five to six million years ago, about the same time humans left, sort of evolved in Africa. Um, and then what happens is you have a, an Asian offshoot of the elephant, and then from that, the mammoth evolved, right? Both the Colombian and then eventually the woolly mammoth. And so it turns out that at the same sort of time places of when elephants and mammoths were migrating into Asia and Siberia and over to North America, humans were beginning to leave Africa about a million and a half years ago and then following almost the same trajectory. So you have humans and mammoths coming over into North America at a later time period. Um, and so it turns out that the mammoths and the Asian elephants are more closely related than the mammoths are to African elephants. But not by much. They're all very, very similar. They're all very close relatives of each other. Hi, I'm Stella reporting from Voice K. We are at the Ontario Science Center with Rachel. Can I ask you some questions? Yes. Why are you here at this event? Um, well, my mom is here for the media event, um, so we can film and take pictures and see this on the first day. Um, and today was actually um, my school's Bulldogs event, um, Bulldogs game, which I didn't want to go to, so I could come, and my mom could come too. So, what's your favorite part so far? Um, I think it's the, I think it's the part where the most preserved mammoth is. Um, there could still be some fur on him, um, pieces of DNA, and some nails. I think Luba was a favorite part to a lot of people. The part about the little baby mammoth Luba, and this was because she was so interesting as an individual specimen. And it was such a great experience to go spend time with the indigenous reindeer herders, the Nenets in northwestern Siberia, who found Yuba and who welcomed us into their home. Um, they are a nomadic people. They follow their reindeer herds in a cycle throughout the year. They live just in a tent of reindeer skins spread over poles of wood. And so to learn about their lives, learn how they discovered Luba, um, was a great introduction to the life of the far north for me. Okay, thank you. Well, we could. Um, so, so in this case, there are some 
some real specimens. Those were only models that I just showed you. But these are real specimens of uh, teeth and neck uh, backbones, neck bones, from mammoths and mastodons found in southern Ontario. These are from a collection at the Royal Ontario Museum that they lent us during this exhibition. And this is a map, a blown up map of southern Ontario showing where mammoths, mastodons, and other what we call proboscideans. That means it's a mammoth or a mastodon, but we're not sure quite. So that's what those sort of orangey markers are. But it shows you that there were a lot of mammoths and mastodons living in southern Ontario. Especially, we found a lot of their remains along the north shore of Lake Erie, and there's a whole cluster of them right around Toronto. Now, there may be lots more in northern Ontario, but this is all farmland and cities, so it's easier for a farmer digging up their, their field to maybe find a, a tooth or a piece of tusk or something. There may be lots of them up there, but there's not as much farming, so we just don't find them.